So I'm Duncan Goff, and once upon a time I worked in feature film, theatre, designer, cabinet maker, and I used to build kitchens and almost everything. And I did a bit of guided touring, and I also have always loved to travel. Uh, imbibed it with my mother's milk, probably, because although I was born in Wimbledon, I was then, at the age of two, I was plucked off and put down in a hundred acres of bush in Rhodesia. So I never had a pair of shoes until I was five years old. And uh, I've always traveled and gone to interesting places. But the first time I went to Spain in 1981, my parents had built a house near Ronda and I just felt at home. And ever since then, I've had this draw to go back to Spain. And over the years, I've spent a lot of time traveling it. Partly because although I have worked and lived, I, I, I lived in Greece, I've worked in Italy, France, Germany, um, Scotland, in a lot of different places. But what I started realizing when I was doing other work, I might only have a week off. And where are you going to go in a week to experience something? Well, I went to Spain and I started, sometimes I then got two weeks or three weeks, but I still wanted to go to the sun to a place. And I started to realize that actually spending a little bit more time in a country and becoming more aware of the language, the culture, and the cultural differences between one part of Spain and another part of Spain were really worthwhile and very enriching. Whereas zooming across six countries, you get no real feel for the, for the language or the particular cultural attitudes of that particular country that you're going through. So it's kind of bringing, learning more that then enriches my own experience. Well, from, from an early, my father was an artist and he taught me to, to try and sketch things. And so from an early age, what I started with, I, would, I, I like to carry a sketchbook. He said, oh, well, you doodle anywhere. So for instance, um, these were doodles I did in Cordoba. Now they're, they're kind of basic, that probably take me 20 or 25 minutes. I have no claim to being an artist. I can't really draw people. So sometimes I do the most crude sort of doodle. But the point is, A, I stop and look for something to draw. And two, I write something when I do it. And it's one of the principles for me of travel. Every time I stop for a cup of coffee, do a doodle, write something. And you get those moments through the day if you stop at the end of the day to write about it, you won't remember those little moments all the way through the day. So doing it, working it that way, for me, means that I have a richer journal, a richer part of it. And it is, oh, I had that albondigas and it was just too hot. Or I had the chaos. Chaos is um, boiled intestine. But you can have nice boiled intestine and, and, and kind of rough boiled intestine. So... Um, <laughs> You know, I make little notes like that. that that's what you put into it. Uh, yes, um, well, three new books last month. Um, the first of which uh, is extracts from all the years of my journals. So I've got the pictures, the sketches, and a translation of my writing in the corners and the stories behind them. And then I've started on a series which is really about the Catalan Pyrenees. And it started because I met a lot of people who said they were going from the Biscay port to Barcelona. And they said they were going through Zaragoza. And I know the bottom of the Ebro Valley is, is a deadly dull place to travel. So I started off, oh well, I'll write a book about the back roads to Barcelona. And this turned out when I got into the Catalan Pyrenees to actually be how to go to the Catalan Pyrenees. And if you want Barcelona, <laughs> you can just drop down there. It's easy enough. So that, this is the first one in that. Um, and then I'm doing, this is a series of seven books. Each book will cover around 100 kilometers of the Catalan Pyrenees. There is a great, um, Motorisma is part of the Catalan Tourist Board, and it's a dedicated to motorcycle tourism. So they have a fantastic website, loads of routes, you can download the GPS, they've talked to accommodation and campsites that all are very welcoming to bikers. Um, great organization. So I'm, but their routes are kind of short routes. 
I'm doing a tour of the Catalan Pyrenees in seven books. And um, part of it is that I like to do things visually rather than just use the sat nav. So, so this is the first 40 kilometers of this route from Le Sud de Gale to Touchen. And as you can see from the map, possibly, um, is that it's got quite a few wiggles in it. Those, those are my three new books, and I'm off to Spain very shortly to work on the next thousand kilometers of those routes <laughs> and doing the drawings and the sketches to go with them. I do, it is a question that, that, that people ask me about it, but it, it, it comes back to my philosophy that even if, even if you're going to go around the world or you're going to Morocco, Spain is the geographical and cultural bridge between Northern Europe and Africa and Arabia. So if you want to start, go for two weeks in Spain and actually practice traveling into little villages, trying to understand what goes on in those villages. You will see once you stop and look and just spend your time doing it, you will find that that lady there always goes to the front of the queue in the supermarket. She must be somebody who's special in this village. So that might be somebody either to talk to or somebody you don't want to piss off or be rude to or anything else. Or it can be, there's all sorts of little cultural things that you can pick up and Spain is a good place to pick that up. I mean, how do you spot a brothel in Spain? Now, if you get a motel that's a block out of the town and there's a bit of dirt growth, you know, it's a block out from the other buildings. And maybe the car park is a bit weedy. It might have a, have a, 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 a fence around the outside. The other key thing is if it's got any kind of pink sign, which might say club, disco, it might even be a pink motel sign. That is a brothel. They're perfectly legal in Spain, but the first motel you arrive to in a Spanish town might not be the one to book into. Partly because I have traveled a lot in the rest of the world. Um, and so I have an awareness that I would love to go back to Africa. I can't afford to go back to Africa. Having been brought up there, I would love to go back to what is now Zimbabwe. When I was 18, I went to work on a sugarcane farm in Zululand. Uh, I've climbed Mount Kenya. Um, but it's for me, when I've got those short times, and maybe when I finish writing travel books about Spain, I will do South America. It would make sense because of the Spanish. And I would still, I would love to do all that extra traveling, but it's what can I achieve at the age of 61 um, in a new career as a writer? What can I achieve? So what I find in Spain is that I'm continually learning more about it and it's such a rich experience and the people that I meet. Last year, I did, a, did right the way around across to, Ca Ca to Catalonia, down through Valencia, down to Andalusia and back. And I think I only paid for one place to stay because I now know people or there's a little, um, I, there's, a, there's one campsite where the lady was very nice. I gave her a book and she fixed the computer so that now whenever I stay in that campsite, I never get charged. And that's been going on for like six years. <laughs> so I just turn up there and, oh, and the, she's not there, but they, when they type me in, I'm free. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's one of the things that I get from really indulging myself in learning about a country, a culture, a language, and the things that are there. And to go back to why I talk about Spain, it's because I see this, this is a bridge. If you're going to travel around the world, don't start off with not being able to get a handle on the culture and society that you pass, pass through. Even if it's only three days you're taking to go through Croatia, there are things you can learn. In Croatia, the tip is that people know where you come from by the style of your leather jacket. So the best place to go is to my website, which is www.duncan-spanish-travel.com. Dot com. And uh, that I have a Facebook page as well, which you can find me on as Duncan Goff. Um, there's, there's two Facebook pages. 
And then I do events and I'm around and about and uh, you might bump into me on a ferry on the way to Spain. <laughs> Don't ride here. Ride here. Explore new horizons with Moto Freight.